Alright, it seems that the mic is on, the game volume is on, everything is on. I have a glass of sweet tea in my hand. We are ready to go! It is episode 3, yes, count them 3, of my Starbound Let's Play. Hello all YouTubers, it is White and Nerdy Man, back from the video game dead. So to speak, I suppose, it's been a very long time since my last episode. I do apologize for that. With life and everything going on, it has been very busy with schooling, and I'm also going to be getting married in 12 days, count them, 12 days. So the planning for that has been underway. I'm extremely excited, but I have found some time on my schedule to make another Let's Play episode, and hopefully I won't fall off the face of the earth or whatever planet I'm on for another six months. But sadly, in my absence, our good friend Moonclaw was deleted barbarously at the hands of an update. He is no longer there, but no longer is my longtime character that you never got to saw, Dexoid. So, it is with a heavy heart that I must say that Moonclaw will be buried. But, to carry on his legacy, it was originally Ghostfinger here, but I tried recording a Let's Play episode and it got uh, messed up, all that good stuff, the game even crashed, so... I just decided to make another character to carry on the good name of Moonclaw, and his name is Dirt Spider. So let us visit him in this whole new world. And hopefully the game doesn't crash. Oh boy, okay. Whew. Got nervous there for a second. And here we are. Now, Moonclaw was an avian, and I decided to buy for a different race. I remember telling you that I wanted to go for an apex next time, and so I decided to do so this time. Dirt Spider is his name. He's got the cool green beard, and I even found him a new sword while exploring, but let's go ahead and teleport to the planet to see this new creation, this new thing, this Alpha Mense 26VA. Yeah! Alrighty. As you can see, this is just another testament to how awesome and randomly generated Starbound is. The new planet, completely different from my old one. Different terrain, different kind of biome, even a different color dirt. And also different random drops as well. I found this. I don't know how well you can hear that. It is a gong that I found while exploring a little bit looking for coal. But. Let us take a visit real quick to the new and improved Chateau du Chadwick up here. A couple of steps, a house on stilts, kind of inspired by Zest, uh, Zisto's Let's, Let's Play. But here we are! It is my stilt house. It is above the ground. Oh, there's always that falling hazard there. Better watch out. <laughs> I will probably kill myself like that more times than not. But here we are. I believe I had everything in the house here from where I left off last time. Let me recharge my health a little bit here in the bed. Yeah, I had the yarn spinner over here, if I can get my mouse to it, and the furnace over here. And I believe that I was about to complete the next quest for the furnace, so we'll go ahead and do that. I need to make some iron for this quest. It takes two ores, unlike in Minecraft, where it only takes one ore usually in order to make one block of it. But... Yes, forging ahead. Good job. You'll need a whole bunch of a whole bunch of iron ore, blah, iron bars to craft an anvil. Say, I'm thinking of um, the TV show Baggage with Jerry Springer. <laughs> You'll see this and a whole lot more on Baggage. But anyhow, I'm getting distracted. The next quest: first contact. Your ship's engine isn't yet strong enough to take you beyond the Alpha Sector. Craft a distress beacon, and maybe you'll ma be able to make a contact with a larger ship. Be make sure you're ready for anything before you do, though. And I will tend to that quest later, because right now I am extremely hungry. Let me eat a few bananas here. Alright. Now, what I plan to do for this episode, and I already did a little bit of exploring earlier, like I said, hunting for coal to make the furnace, but... I plan on exploring the planet, circumventing the planet. And I believe I have everything that I need. Oh, no, I was going to make some bandages. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. Might need a little bit more than just two. There's some nasty beasties up there. Go ahead and slip them on here. Alrighty. 
I do believe all systems are go to go ahead and circumnavigate this planet. There's my farm there, Jebediah. And I got my tree farm over here. Creepy looking thorn trees. I just, I love all the different kind of plants even in this game. Okay. No one wants to mess with me whenever I have a yard full of thorn trees. I'm gonna hippity hoppity there. Oh, yay, it's friendly. I'm so thankful it's friendly. I'll go ahead and cut one of these vines down because these, they are a plentiful source of plant fibers. As you have probably seen in my last video. And I'm trying to remember all the tips and tricks that I gave in previous videos, so if I repeat myself, I definitely apologize. But it's kind of like what I say. Even if it's something that I already blatantly know, it's always good for a little bit of a reminder. But if you guys need me to just shut up and focus on something else, then holy crap! I'm focusing on this hostile animal. Come here! Come here, turtle shell! You're not like the Koopa Troopa creature mixed with a palm tree in my old world. Alright. Got him. And this, yes, I'm sad to say, this was a house of my avian neighbor. But I think he got killed by a monster because I have not seen him around since my hunt for coal. This is actually where I stole the gong from. Sue me! He can't because he's dead. But, <laughs> yeah, it always makes me sad whenever I lose a neighbor, especially one that's not going to try to kill me. Makes it a little bit more lonely, but that's why there's tons of other planets all around the universe here. Let me see. Go ahead and get after that plant fire. I'm also. Fi fire. Fiber. I'm also seeing a lot of uh, copper. This planet is very plentiful. If you see that little square hole behind my character, right here, that's where I found like a huge vein of copper. Uh, and once again, a testament to the game's variety. You know, sometimes you get worlds that are absolutely pouring resources out the wazoo. <laughs> and there are other times where you have to scrape and scavenge and hunt and kill just to get one piece of coal. Say so Minecraft would have that problem sometimes that would drive me absolutely crazy. But here we go. Onward to circumventing the globe. There we go. Got a couple red petals. Might be able to use that later. Come here! Come here, you! Feel the taste of my blade! Okay. Got some raw alien meat out of that. There we go. If I can ma make a makeshift campfire if need be. I'm hoping to circumvent the planet in just one day. Or maybe a before night, I should say. Got a pixel can there. Because there are some extremely dangerous beasties on this planet at night. Most of them are flying. There's one thing that this game will teach you more than anything else. Holy crap! Look at all that wood. Jeez. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Got distracted again. Yeah, there's one thing that this game will teach you more than anything, is that birds are not your friends. I may have said that in a previous video, but it's worth repeating, birds are not your friends. They will most likely try to kill you, and they have freaking superpowers, and holy crap! That's gold! <laughs> Man! Talk about a millionaire planet! I don't know what I'm talking about, actually. But man, right next to an iron vein, too. So close to the surface. That is pretty darn nifty, if I do say so myself. You see, in Starbound, I think I've... Once again, I think I'm, tell, I think I'm telling you everything that I've told you before, but, it's okay, but, uh, but I suppose it's okay. It's my Let's Play. Yeah. But you need some of the higher metals in order to progress in the game's kind of technology tree, I guess you could say. Maybe kind of like uh, Civilization, you have to have a certain level of technology before you can progress to the next one, and so on and so forth. Iron is one of the most basic levels, and then you get to, oh gosh, I think like Steel, dur well, no, it's Dura Steel. It's, it's different. I, I It's been so long since I played, I can't remember. But as I go along here, especially after I complete that Distress Beacon quest, I'll be able to have the more advanced metals that I need to progress and hopefully explore further into the galaxy. 
get out of this little grotto here. But yeah, as of the last update, I do not know if they have made any more actual quests or not. Because the quests, the last time I actually picked up and played, um, they ended after the distress, distress beacon. After that, you're on your own to kind of figure out. And by figure out, I mean I extensively read the wiki. <laughs> but I don't know if they added any more quests or not. But as I'm mining my way to some coal here, I guess I'll give you a little bit of update of what's going on personally for me. Like I told you, I'm getting married to my sweetheart Elise. That'll be on August the 2nd. And then after that, I definitely know there won't be any Let's Play videos, at least for 10 days, because we're going on the honeymoon to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm extremely excited for it, and she is too. And oh, yay, we have another neighbor and a random campfire drop. That's interesting. Hello? Yay! This neighbor is alive! What do you have in your bookshelves here? Nothing? Okay. Well, if you don't mind, I'm going to smash all your pots here for pixels. True and blue to a regular RPG. Hello, friend. Welcome to our village, Apex friend. Oh, we have a village here. We have chest. Naf slapper. <laughs> I love some of the names of these weapons. Is it better than my useless poker? Yes, it is. Give me the naf slapper. You scruffy nerf herder. For all you Star Wars geeks out there. Alright. And that's the great thing about um, looting in this game. You can loot the loot. I could, if I really wanted to, take, say, this wall decoration here. There you go. Tech decorative priest mask. I can put that up in my house, which I probably will. And no one gets extremely mad for it. Oh, no. Never mind. I will save you. Okay, she was she was running from the creatures, not from me. <laughs> I thought they were about to cast my point down. I think it also depends on what you steal and who you steal from. I guess you probably shouldn't steal from someone with plasma rifles. I have made that mistake before in other games, and it has cost me my apex, or I forget what race I was playing as, but it's cost me my life before. So yeah, pick your battles carefully get that silver ore out of here. I am a filthy, rich, darn dirty ape, if I do say so myself. Let me see. Keep on going here. Another pixel thing. This sword is not as fast as my other one, but it does a little bit more damage. That's also an interesting thing about this game as well, is you can select your weaponry based on your play style. Do you like the huge weapons that deal massive amount of damage, but you're slower than FEMA, then you can get those kind of weapons. Not FEMA, but... <laughs> Maybe I'll get... Oh, gosh! Why did I do this to myself? In a dark cave, all alone. Never fear! Torches are here! Goodness gracious, that was a bit scary. Alright. Getting out of the cave. Yeah, just one moment of not paying attention, just like driving. You'll end up dead. Oh, us! Now, is this... Okay, that flying creature does not look like it's going to attack me. You will definitely know if they attack you. Because they will. That was probably one of the most stupidest and obvious things I've ever said. But! It's okay. My mind is erasing, and the planet is right for the exploring. I'm going to take this chest with me. Loot the loot holder. There we go. I see another pixel canister in there, but I don't really feel like mining at the moment. I just kind of want to explore the planet. Holy Macca freaking Rooney! Jeez Louise, look at all that iron! I will definitely help myself to this. Thank you very much. Goodness gracious. I am Iron Ape. Getting all the iron, then making my escape. Yeah. I remember in high school, I had so many horrible variants of that song. 
I don't want to sing it on here based on the fact that I do not want to get slammed or chewed at for it. Gotta love the high school days. And I apologize for just randomly reminiscing here as I'm collecting this iron. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Gimme, 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 gimme. Yeah! Awesome. Get that one little piece of coal there. Wouldn't that stink if this game had a weight-based inventory? That would stink. Because that would probably would have already been over-encumbered by now. Just from the iron alone. And I guess there is sort of a weight limit. Each, each uh, item block... Or can be stacked, I think, up to 1,000 times, which is much more than it would be in uh, Minecraft. I'm not really sure about Terraria. As I've said before, Terraria I'm not extremely experienced with because I was not too impressed with it whenever I played it. it Maybe want to play Minecraft. And then again, I think the reason behind that is that as much as I do enjoy action games, because Terraria is much more focused on the action, because you know you have all the sorts of different high-level beasties and stuff like that, whereas Minecraft is more about survival and building. Not that it's not present in Terraria, but it's just, I feel like it's, the survival theme is emphasized a little bit more. As it is here in Starbound, I think it I think that our emphasis in Starbound is more on survival rather than just pure action because you really don't want to get into fights in this game if you can help it, especially at night. Unless if you're looking for meat or something like that. It really depends on the player, but I would I would not say that the action is the, the sole focus in this game. It's about growing food or hunting food, collecting, I would say leveling up, but there's not really a leveling up system, getting pixels buying new stuff, exploring, all that good stuff, whereas a Terraria is like about exploring, of course collecting, with a hint of survival in there. Once again, I'm getting on a tangent, I apologize, let me get past the little crocodile looking creatures here. So yeah, so I guess as far as tips, keep on going with Starbound, you know, whenever you're doing an exploration like this, as you can see I'm already getting cold, it, it'll help you to have a yarn spinner and craft the warmer clothing that's available to you. Just so you won't freeze to death while you're out here looking around and all that good stuff. But always, always, always have spare bandages and there's birdies trying to kill me. Come here. Come here. Got it. Come here. You'll never take me alive! Die, rebel scum! Ow. Man, as you can see, the nighttime monster's absolutely deadly. Dude, that one probably kill me in about four hits. Whoa, look at that thing! Just popped out of the ground there. That's really cool. Once again, the monster generation generator in this game is great. Yeah, it's interesting how the monster monsters are made in this in this game. Uh, It's, the, the game has a huge selection of body parts and functions and stuff like that and different abilities um, uh, blocked in right here. And based on the planet coordinates, it assembles the monsters according to that code, that secret message from aliens in outer space. Which aliens? Well, it's definitely one of the six graces that you can play as in this game. And I also wonder, speaking of races, there was another race that's supposed to be playable called the Nova Kid. And those look really interesting. It's each, each race is based on a different culture or a different kind of technology level, I guess you could say. It's starting to get cold. Whoa! Holy crap! It's a giant monkey swir squirrel! Holy crap! Oh my gosh! Oh gosh! Oh, this could very darn well be the end of me right here. This might put all exploration on halt. Or it could stop chasing me. That would be fantastic. Man, that was crazy. Holy moly. 
What the heck was that? That looked like a giant monkey squirrel. Hold on, let me mine out. Ah, oh, crap! Oh, gosh! Oh! Well, I think this is the first example of death that you can see in this game. As you can see, I'm being recloned in all of my Apex Monkey glory. Yes. Clone me! Awesome. Put some clothes on, though, that, man. That's the, that's indecent. Alrighty. Well, I think that's the first instance of death that you can see in this Let's Play, this series of Let's Plays. Um, it doesn't punish you too bad, at least on this mode. It just takes away approximately half of your pixels. I think it's a little bit of a different amount each time. Well, our circumnavigation right there was put on hold. Rest in peace. What was his name? Dirt Spider. I forgot his name there for a second. But he lives again! Dirt Spider 2.0. I want to see if I can kill that giant squirrel again. Of course, there's those things. That's what killed me. You made me do this! Good gracious. I'm telling you, the nighttime monsters. You don't really want to go venturing out like I am doing right now. I'm kind of setting a bad example. You don't really want to be doing that without at least a little bit of armor on. And it won't be long before you can actually start making armor. I don't know if I can make armor in this furnace right now or not. Once again, I apologize. I'm all over the place. No, 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 no. You need a... What am I doing? You need an anvil for that. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting all scrambled. Can I make an anvil right now? <laughs> I know you guys are probably like, What the heck are you doing? Make up your mind! Are you staying? Or are you going? So we got a metal work station here. Yeah, okay, yeah, we can go ahead and make an iron anvil if I have enough. Now we need eight iron bars. Well, I'm pretty freaking sure that I have more than enough iron. Yeah, 90 pieces of iron. Holy crap. Oh my goodness. So much iron. That's still smelting. I'm letting it do this thing because I'm not just going to stand here and make you watch it the whole time. But great golly, nets. Say, so I'm going to go ahead and take the iron that I need in order to make an iron anvil. <laughs> I'm not going to stand around here all day long. I'm going to go ahead and cook up some alien ribeye on the grill there. Thank you kindly. Because my character is omnivorous. Thank you very much. He will eat what he can eat when he can eat it. Let me see. Yeah, I'll go ahead and get the iron anvil going on here. Put it upstairs on a flimsy wooden platform. Gotta love logic in these video games. But hey, that's part of what video games are, is an escape from reality. Let me see. Now here you can make all sorts of cool little weapons. Like the semicycle here. I'm also really wanting to make some armor, if I possibly can. Hunting bow. I need some more iron bars, but I can upgrade my bow! Make it pack more of a punch, do more damage, make enemies cry! And you will definitely need to do that because by the time you start getting to the outer planets, or the planets with a higher threat level, it's it gets they get pretty nasty pretty darn quick. Let's see now I need copper, copper implements for that. Let me go ahead and see if I can make some armor, or some copper armor while I'm at it. How many how many pieces of copper do I have? I th think I have more than twelve stored in a chest upstairs over here. Once again, sorry, I'm just kind of hanging around in my house, but. It, it gives you a chance to see the building and the upgrading mechanics for yourself. I'm really trying to remember how to do all this, so bear with me here. When it comes to uh, upgrading, you, you get the ores from the ground, of course. You cannot use them until you smelt them in the furnace here. And unlike Minecraft, I, th uh, I know I said this before, unlike in Minecraft where it's just, you know, it's one ore makes one block. Or, yeah, one, one block makes one ingot. Um, it takes 
typically two, if not more, in this game to make an ingot. Or ingot, however you pronounce it, or ingo. Now we have too complicated. Alright. I have enough for the time. Ooh, wait a minute. Do I make a new pickaxe or new armor? I'm going to vie for armor this time because my pickaxe is still in relatively good shape. And I can even take it a step farther and make defector's pants. There you go. I'm going to go ahead and put those on. And I have a little bit more armor to protect myself from damage. Not too much, though. I'll need to get a little bit more ores for that. But I think you now have a glimpse into the armor crafting system of this game. It's it's pretty simple. It, the game pretty much walks you through. And if you're not sure how to make something, then just consult the wiki. And that mask looks righteously creepy hanging in my house. Definitely had to collect more decorations as I go. But, ring the gongs! It is time to send the war party of one off to collect- Holy crap! Holy crap! Oh my gosh! I didn't mean it! I didn't mean it! I didn't mean it! And I just died again. <laughs> I was trying to get my spout. <laughs> I think maybe ringing the gong attracts monsters. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, that was slightly embarrassing. Glad I went ahead and crafted the stuff that I needed to craft, otherwise I would have lost the pixels that I needed to do so. And that is one thing that does suck about the armor crafting system in this game, is that typically, very typically, the armors and weapons that you have require pixels in order to forge them. I don't know why, it's just like you need to pay the almighty anvil, the money mogul, greedy corporation a anvil in order to manufacture your goods. But I think it's just part of how it keeps the gameplay interesting. Even though and even though you have unlimited lives, it, it it gives it's a decent slap on the wrist. If you die. Go away, fart cloud launcher! I'll smack you around. Come here. Y'all, you idiots bum-rushed my house. Took my food. Raped and pillaged. Now it is my turn for revenge. Don't know why I keep on threatening it. It's dead. But if any of its comrades are listening, like that one over there, you, die. 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 Once again, pardon me. And my ridiculousness. Goodness gracious, those things are weird looking. But so cool! Are you friendly? Mr. Ramhorn? Ramhornosaurus? I believe he is friendly. Oh gosh. Try to kill him without pissing off the other one. Alright. And there's another one right there. Come here! Oh, a campfire! Hey, we have a traitor here. I am definitely not unopposed to that. I killed this dude's campfire. I apologize, sir. Here you go. So you don't die. Oh, are you serious? Now this was new with the update. It looks like rain puts out campfires. That is unfortunate. There you go, sir. Let me warm up a little bit. Now, typically, they have things to trade. They got work shirts. See, it's a glitch! Goods for pixels! Okay. I don't really have anything there that's interesting me, per se. Thank you for selling stuff to me. Alright, now I'll recharge my health. Thank you for letting me use your bed. You can go ahead and go back to sleep. There you go. Get a little bit more copper here, and by a little bit, I mean I think I've struck another vein here. I love how plentiful this planet is, and I think morning is about to break! Huzzah! Hallelujah! 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 It's not nighttime. 
Or maybe I'm maybe I'm dreaming that, I don't know. I thought it was there for a second. It's playing tricks on my eyes. We got some sort of stone down there. No, it's sand, okay. I thought it was actual stone, I thought it was iron. Cannot really see with this light. I hope you guys can see too. I hope it's not too dark. It shouldn't be. I believe I've adjusted it to how I see it on the screen is how you would see it as a viewer, but if there is a problem, please let me know in the comments, kindly, respectfully, and I will tend to that definitely for the next episode. Okay, got him out of the way. Starting to get really cold again. Do not want to freeze to death. Are you friend or foe? Mutated Perry the Platypus. Oh, that one's not. Oh, gosh. So many weird creatures. Yeah, that one was like a horribly mutated Perry the Platypus. Definitely need to start naming the monsters here. I remember in my old world, with Mooncaw, I had Bulbasaurs. Now I have Perry the Platypus's ram horns. And whatever these things are. Jerks. The wild jerk face. Hey, you got another gong here. Wake up, neighbor! Hello, neighbor. How you do? Oh my goodness, I'm naked. I am very sorry for getting naked in your bed there. <laughs> Seems mildly inappropriate. Just recharging my health for a second. What is your name? You look like you've been in some wars. Well, quite possibly. That is a thing about the character's backstory. You only get the minimal little bit like with the... Oh, shoot. The Apex. Could not remember there for a second. With the Apex's backstory, it's very interesting. They are super intelligent, and they found a way to modify their genetic code to make them extremely smart but at the cost of making them look like monkeys. So, I believe they may have been once human. I guess following along this this little tale where they kind of go backwards evolutionary, evolutionarily speaking. Fantastic science fiction. But, once again, I am getting ahead of myself. Um, they were escaping a group of their ape overlords called the Mininog. The true apexes were... I'm getting distracted by this Perry the Platypus going. Anyhow, I'm sorry. I am so sorry I'm, I've gotten majorly distracted. But, um... No, my, my character was one of the few that questioned the ape overlords, the big brothers, and escaped on my spaceship. Now, as to what he did before that, was he part of Wolfers? Possibly. That is for you to decide, and for your imagination to run wild, and ooh, there's a house under there. I have to check this out. Under the ground here. Now, this is interesting. I wonder if there's a village under there. Well, let me see if this house over here... Oh my goodness! Leads to it. There we go. Oh, wait! No, 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 no. This isn't my... This is the neighbor's house that's really close to my house. Because I stole his gong. <laughs> that's interesting. Hello, friend! Scratch like no one's watching. I like the way you think, my friend. There is a temple entrance here, or something like that. Holy moly! Oh, you're not friendly! Oh no, you're not friendly! Why are you shooting at me?! What did I do to earn this?! Goodness gracious! These neighbors are not so friendly! Wow! Well, you got your first glimpse of really hostile neighbors. 
I don't think they like their temples being touched. All the more incentive to touch them! Wow, this is actually really cool. I haven't seen something like this before. It's their own personal little lake. Check it out. It is an avian temple. Don't kill me. Go away. Go away. Goodness gracious, I might not live through this encounter. Oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. That was a whole lot of not fun. Let's go ahead and get some bandages here. There we go. Whew! That was mildly horrifying, if I do say so myself. Jeez. <laughs> Let me see if I can shimmy on over here and tango with the hostile neighbor over here and then holy crap I'm already at 36 minutes I don't know if I should just stop right here but there's a temple right for the exploring holy crap holy moly I take it you guys don't like visitors Got him. Whew. That was a bit crazy. I think I got plenty of plant fibers for bandages. Can't talk straight, I'm so flustered. My goodness. Alright, I think this will be a good place to end the episode for now before it gets way too long, but when we come back, I will explore this temple and hopefully clear out the miscreants inside. So, my name is Chad, a.k.a. White and Nerdy Man. I'm signing off. Thank you so much for watching Episode 3 of my Starbound Let's Play, and hopefully it won't be six months again before the next one. I'm hoping to do one maybe in the next couple of days or so. We'll see how my time and schedule looks out. But, once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.